idea dropped in my box. I thought, oh, that's what it is. It's podcasting. This is oh, great. Oh, this is what... right now. We're starting off right now. Welcome, everybody. We're live now on Facebook. <laughs> we just started, <laughs> but now we are really live. We're very happy to have you on our show. Um, me, my, myself, Tomoko and Tracy Hitchings are going to present our podcasts today to you. It is a very exciting day for us because it's launch day. And after eight weeks of being part of the amazing Broadcast Yourself Academy by London Real, we are here today. We've been through a lot of resistance. We've been through a lot of struggles. But today, we're happy to present you our podcast. We recorded seven to eight episodes already. And we're very excited to share those, those episodes with you. We are very excited to share our, uh, our background with you, why we come, came up with this podcast, uh, and what you can expect from us now, and what you can expect from us in the future. So please, when you have a question, when you have a comment, when you have a feedback or whatever, don't worry, write them down and we will go by them and answer your questions. We're very happy to do that. But we first, first we're going to introduce ourselves and let's start with the ladies in the show. Tomoko, welcome. Woohoo! My name is Tomoko. I am originally from Japan by way of New York for 14 years and currently living in Las Vegas. Broadcasting from Las Vegas, y'all. <laughs> and I am a singer songwriter, also the host of my new show called Songwriter's Room, and the creator of um, I've been a YouTuber for, for a few years. I have a series called Japan News. Whoop, whoop. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tracy, are you that exciting as Tomoko is? Oh, definitely. <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're finally here. You know, uh, yes, I'm Tracy Hitchings. I'm originally from England in Cornwall. And my stomping ground was sort of like London for about 30 years in the progressive rock industry doing variable things. My podcast um, is called Tracy's Prog World. And I can't wait to get started and reconnect. And I'm a singer songwriter myself. And uh, it's been a bit of a journey, not being in my band anymore. So I met my husband eight years ago and took a full turn and steamrode out into Australia, where I am now from the Gold Coast on the Gold Coast in Queensland. So yeah, this is kind of exciting. I don't even know what to say really sometimes. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> You've I been guess our, our, na our names and the showing is okay. They're, oh, now, okay. They are here back again. <laughs> when, there, when there is a comment and when you guys are, are asking questions or are uh, placing a comment, we will show them in our show. So okay. that's why I, I did that. So but please leave no a comment. I want to know about you, Alexander. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm Alexander Gerard. I am from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So we're from all around the world. Tomoko is from the USA. Tracy is from Australia, originally from the UK, of course. But And I'm from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, from Europe. And I started my podcast, Proud to be Out. Um, it's a podcast it, based on the challenges of gay men in their 30s. Um, I am a gay man myself and I'm proud to be out and that's the reason why I called my show Proud to be Out. And I started this podcast because 10 years ago I graduated as a media uh, professional. I worked in sales the last couple of years and now it's time to go back to create my online media platform and to help inspire uh, other gay men in their 30s with problems like loneliness, how to find Mr. Right, and uh, how to deal with regret or a mental, uh, a, a healthy mental state. And that's why I'm here today. Yay! I love Ooh. the title, proud to be, proud to be out, Jack right. Alexander. Yeah. I yeah. am proud to be out as a Japanese too. <laughs> <laughs> Let us all to be proud. Let us all be proud and out. And especially today because it's launch day. And we want to know more because Tomoko, you are uh, you are going to um, uh, 
dive deep in the heads of songwriters with mm -hmm. your podcast. Can you tell us more why you want to focus on songwriters and how did you become a songwriter yourself? Um, I remember my first memory was I was already singing when I was three years old back in Japan. I had like 10 Japanese guys in the audience. But songwriting came to me after I listened to the Beatles and at nine years old, I came across my big sister had a piece of album by Stevie Wonder, one of the masterpieces called The Songs in the Key of Life. That changed my life. Good morning, evening friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I have serious news to pass on to everybody. So I was nine years Woo! old. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I was nine years old. I didn't know English, but my soul understood and that changed my life. So that's why I'm so big about songwriting because the music conveys something and something positive can change our lives. If music heals, but people focus on singers. Listen, mm -hmm. there will be no singers without songs. There will be no songs without songwriters. So songwriting matters, and that's why I am. Um, I want to spotlight songwriters. <laughs> that's a great compliment of Jeff, and you are a great singer as well. Uh, my question is, why are you focusing on songwriters and not on singers? Because you're a singer yourself. Well. There, because there's so much uh, focus on singers, but not many people talking about songwriters and uh, they don't reveal really uh, the process of songwriting. Songs already done and you hear it, but you don't know how they, how they make it. What's the stories behind it? You know, how do they make lyrics comes first or mm -hmm. melody first or see Tracy, you know, uh, you know how it is. We, we yeah. do, we have a different processes and I think it's very interesting, you know, to hear other people. So I have all different, all walks of life, songwriters from all over the world, from Indies to uh, veterans and from all genres, from uh, jazz, soul, hip hop, gospel, uh, spoken word, folks, musical, composers, everything and anything. Great. Amazing. And you were in Las Vegas. That's your hometown, right? Yes. So I believe you You met a lot of songwriters, artists, performers. Perf right. 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 Well, you think when you think of Las Vegas, you think of strip, that little, you know, mm -hmm. gambling place. That's a little, little bitty, you know, play, tiny spot in, in the center. Las Vegas is actually surrounded by, you know, uh, desert and mountains, beautiful nature, kind of like a California without beach. Mm -hmm. But when I met a lot of big guys, uh, p famous people, when I was in New York, I was there for 14 years. Yes, I can mm -hmm. write a book about that. But uh, Me Too movement, I cannot name anybody, but hoo -hoo. a book or a podcast, maybe besides. <laughs> oh, I am actually writing the book called Jap My Japan News, okay. more related to Japan News, but I'm a singer songwriter itself, so it reveals itself, but I cannot bring any name, but I did meet yeah. a lot of people and I had to go through some Me Too stuff too. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. another day of a story. So what about that's you, Tracy? Day. Yeah, what about you, Tracy? You're a singer songwriter too. So what was the question? I've got- I'm, I'm, what, what, what is your what is your what is your podcast about? Well, um, yeah, very good question. It's um, it's a way of reconnecting back into a world that I once lived in for over you know sort of a thirty year period, and um, I, it just it just happened. I thought, oh, great, because I need that reconnection. I'm kind of out on a limb in a way, and I still love that world with the progressive rock world. And I love the other worlds and different musics, but it just seems that it's such an obvious thing because I have contacts and friends there. So um, it's it's actually quite good fun seeing some people come forward and say, "Oh, hi, you're 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 still alive." <laughs> it's uh, that's been fun, 
And um, I like stories. I've had a lot of my own stories. I've had a lot of health issues in between my music career. And I love sharing stories of music healing as well. It's so true what you're saying, Tomoko. Music is healing. Yeah. And there's different healing modalities of music out there as well on different levels. And I've had some stories come in already, um, um, you know, interviewing. And uh, I, I just love it. So, like, through the music and through just life stories, um, uh, I'm creating my podcasts. Kind of, it comes from within myself and my journeys and my own values and my and and where I've been. But I want to hear other people's and share and get those aha moments that you can have in life. And uh, yeah, and and sort of develop it on from there. And obviously, being a, a singer songwriter. Um, I had to quickly become that when I came to Australia because I had nobody else to play the guitar for me or, you know, play the keyboards or the drums. So I had to kind of recreate how I could do it and uh, getting the right people around me and, and learning because I wanted to write my own songs and not just have people just write for me. And I was writing with the other band. And yeah, so this time I'm kind of doing the, doing the lot, but with a great producer, Daniel Sporovsky, and uh, it's really exciting. There's so many facets to this for me. Sometimes I'm wondering, hang on a minute, gosh, <laughs> there's so much here, but I'm really looking forward to more interviews coming in because you realize how much is out there. So many stories to be told and yeah. shared through the music, through the, you know, interweaving it, interweaving it within my prog world and people that I know out there that life has happened to them. Well, come on board and share it. Come on board and share it, whether you're a roadie, whether you're a singer, whether you're a fan, you know, let's let's share these stories and it, they could be great fun. They could just be personal stories or stories on the road. And you already recorded some episodes, right, Tracy? Yes, I have. I think I've man I managed six. Six. Yeah. And can you tell something more about the episodes you already recorded and the, the episodes people already can listen to? Yeah. Um, the one that comes to mind straight away is the last one I did because it's still fresh. And it was um, a, a wonderful gentleman called uh, Shivala Derma. And he's a uh, um, peace emissary and uh, he's gone around the world. And I think his first um, real big talk was in 1993 in New Zealand. Uh, and he's into sound healing. And it's a lot more than that. It's better to go on the podcast and hear it. Um, he's uh, he's a voice for people and uh, he uses instruments for healing and for him it was, it was life-saving and the great story about Shivala Derma is at the age of 19 he was in a car crash and he died in the car crash but miraculously he actually was brought back to life and um, but before that car crash he was a young man with a very different name. And he used to love rock music. He used to love everything from Pink Floyd to Led Zeppelin to uh, Deep Purple. And used to play in bands, playing all that stuff. Really loved the rock stuff and like the party life. Well, surviving that crash, something completely changed for him. And his music, um, within the story that you'll hear on the podcast, how the change come and what he became uh, is going around healing people around the world and he's a he's a speaker he's a um like a mystic teacher but i've been to one of his sound ceremonies and it's just washed you and bathed you in all this in, in this wonderful vibration and um and it's just an amazing story from someone who was a real rock drummer and loved all this stuff like black sappers and everything that's come to be um this uh, healer and using gongs and and uh beautiful bowls of great resonations and it's just wonderful and that that particular show is called um uh uh dying to live and um and it's and it, the paradox is is that you know because it's not just surviving it's actually about living and how you change with something that happens like that that you can't he couldn't no more drum in that way or play guitar in that way the rock stuff it had gone from him something had changed but using this more gentler approach of um, uh, like healing type of music or a, a meditative music was where he could go. So he's taken it out into the world and helped many people. So I loved, I loved the story. I, I, I loved it. Yeah. It's amazing. That sounds it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Um, I can imagine, like, I think Tomoko and I experienced it as well. And I think you too. 
when you recording such an episode, what what will happen with you after you after the recording stop? Me? Oh, Tracy, right. like in the oh, story, yes, absolutely. Right? You know what? I because will it's say. It's very interesting to 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 know for the listener. I think that it is such a it's such an experience every time you yes. are recording an, an yeah. episode with 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 yeah. someone who has such a genuine conversation with you and is yeah. so honest about his life yeah. and about his experiences. Yeah, yeah, I, and it's amazing because I part. I mean, I was overjoyed, but part of me was also kind of exhausted for him as well. <laughs> But in a great way, you know, in a great way to what how his life shifted from being who was this person that was going to go out and be this great rock drummer, great rock guitarist, great rock singer, who changed it into something completely different and didn't survive, lived. And it was like, oh, my God, I so get this. I've, I've had aspects of myself here. But this was just on a, another another level that I haven't heard before. There's many stories out there like that. And it's so great to share them. It's that aha moment you get yourself when you're interviewing, isn't it? You can almost get lost. <laughs> Absolutely. You can get lost, yeah, because yeah. you're preparing yeah. questions and you have your yeah. questions there and yeah. you want to structureize. And when you yeah. when you start your podcast, you're giving your audience an introduction of, of what they can expect. But most of the time you have to record it again because it's going a completely different <laughs> way, right? Yeah, yeah. There's been a few um, instances like that when you think, oh, this is just going so well. And then... Oh gosh, but how do I get back there? And how do I do this? And how do I ask that? And there, there is an awful lot to this. It's, uh, I thought it was going to be flipping on a switch and you ask a few questions and there's your podcast. Oh boy. <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't really think it was going to be that easy, but it, it there is a lot to it, isn't there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to, I want to read. Miss Carla says, love the passion for your podcast, guys. That will make it fun. I can feel the passion from you both. And, uh, I want to know, um, more about, uh, I'm proud to be out. Yeah. Proud to be out, yes. Yes, Proud to be out is a podcast I came up with a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, I was already, I, when I was, um, I think 20, I'm now 31. When I got 28, I was out already for a few years. And... Um, I realized that there there's a lot of information for for gay men, gay women, or for everybody in the LGBTQ plus community, um, how to come out and information about it's okay to accept yourself and to be yourself. And that's amazing because that's so needed. But there's something more needed in our community. And that's for the people who are already out there, who are already proud and out and about for a couple of years. But what the society expects from us, the people who are already out there and are happily gay or happily lesbian or whatever title, and I don't want to put titles on it, um, there, there's not much out there for them because we are facing challenges still. We are still facing challenges with accepting ourselves, um, how to deal with social masks, how to deal with loneliness, how to build up and keep a genuine relationships, a relationship, um, and all those topics I want to address to gay men in their thirties. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. <coughs> sorry, that's beautiful. Yeah, that really is. I hope. Yeah, caring, um, caring for the community, and you know, caring for how people are dealing <laughs> with these things. It's you know, it's it might be easy for some these days, but not necessarily. Not necessarily no. at all. I, I've well, seen that. When we started our, our, our podcasts or when we started this journey with the London Real and Broadcast Yourself Academy, I remember, and I think you guys too, in our first week, we have to come up with our own values, with our mm -hmm. own, we have to, to look deep inside ourselves to find something what we yeah. are very yeah. passionate about. Yeah. And um, this is the subject I was very passionate about. And we had to look for a mini audience, a media audience, are like a target audience you want to target on and we yeah. had to do interviews with them. And I found four very, very interesting men uh, here in the Netherlands. I had a coffee with them and, or I had a Skype meeting with them and I questioned them about their challenges in life. And I felt there is so much going on still with people in their thirties. Uh, I had to do something about it. And especially in, 
Um, I had a very, very nice conversation with Michael DiOrio. He's, he's a gay life coach from Toronto, Canada, and he is dealing with uh, um, matters about um, um, how to find Mr. Right or how to, how to focus on Mr. Right's rights without the distractions of his wrongs. And because we are so used to wearing masks in the time we were not out, and we want to pretend like a straight guy and just following the path like everybody expecting from us. We're so used to wearing masks that when we are out and proud to be out, we are going to wear other social masks. And that's where a conversation went very interesting that you don't need to wear a social mask, just be yourself. Yeah. And what I think is very interesting about my seven different episodes, every time it's coming back, back and it's the red thread through my podcasts. First, you have to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Absolutely. And I think that's beautiful. That is so yes. true. So true. And I think uh, you're I, asking this question. That is well, just so true. And that's beautifully put. Uh, can yeah. I just say something quickly, if I may? Because I've seen a few people come up that I've not um, acknowledged. My friend Marion Cairns, thank you for coming through. My sister Delia and Fudge that came through earlier, I didn't acknowledge because we were busy getting ready and acknowledging that, yeah, you're still listening. Great, guys. That's really brilliant. <laughs> Hope I'm doing all right. <laughs> okay. I'll be quiet. Well, <laughs> I, I, I really uh, can relate to learning to love myself because when i i said i was already singing when i was three but my mother was struggling and uh, working all the time and she never see me in a long time when i was five she saw me in a long time and she said what an ugly child so that uh crashed my yeah mm -hmm. It, that was my fate. That was my fate. Oh, yeah. I probably I chose from previous life, whatever. That was the okay. theme that I needed to learn. So I'm I'm Leo, born in the young tiger. I'm from Osaka. I was born fearless, but that crushed my soul to the core. And I buried my passion and gave up singing to because I believed I was too ugly to be a singer. So uh all my life up until now, I Oh my, I had to learn how to love myself. So I can really relate to that, that what you're talking about. Although we have two different backgrounds and lives, stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> it is, I'm focusing on gay men in their thirties, but, but, and we can't start a podcast now actually about loving yourself first, but it's so important for everyone to do that. And everybody like, society created us like you have to behave like how everybody expects you to behave yeah. and act normal and following the path but and i think how did because when i uh started this whole journey and i told my friends like i'm going to create a podcast and i really want to inspire people and to motivate people and it would be amazing when people listen to my guests uh, experiences and 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 expertise and my questions and when the podcast is over they keep thinking about what we talk what we told about and then they're going to 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 put that into action that is so great and many people around me are like what is a podcast yeah <laughs> so are you got are you gonna earn money with that how much gonna earn how many money are you gonna earn with that what's your business model actually like um okay but it is from the inside. We really want to share value yeah. and we yeah. want to share yeah. content. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. quite right. It's without the value, how can anything stick? Without the belief, exactly. how does it stick? And I don't think we'd have come through all this in this last months we've been together, um, you know, and still be here now if we didn't believe in the reason why we just want to do this. It, it, you have to have a reason. You have to have a core value there. You have to love what you're doing. And I, I loved what I did for 30 years. And I'm thinking, gosh, I could go back into that, but create something else around it, a chat show, talk to people that I used to know or people that are just familiar with that area of music that we can talk about, but our life stuff as well. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I've had so much illness in my life and, um, it's always been healed through some sort of modality of something natural or 
or music or vibration or something so or and it's about everything in life Who, what are other people's values what are their values what can we share with them you know so mm -hmm. i think that i think there's going to be so much to gain for this and the people that have these podcasts down the years it's because they can just keep adding to that isn't it you know um, yeah. but i actually i've heard of the word podcast and I thought I'd been on podcasts, but I hadn't. I just heard of the word, but it wasn't until going on London Real that this dropped through my box from Brian Rose. I thought, oh, well, this really makes sense because it's the latest thing. It's the kind of, well, over. it's probably been out there for years, but mm -hmm. it's sort of latest technology to join people together as we are now. I mean, look at you. You're thousands of miles, 10,000 miles away one way, and it's yeah. just crazy, isn't it? Isn't this brilliant? <laughs> It is. You know, you know the the meaning of podcast is is changing, and uh, when they started out, it was only audio, and we already uh, uh, posted, uploaded. Uh, it's on on Apple Music and yes. Spotify and other platforms yes. for on my audio. Team. But my, if I'm if I may uh, allowed to say that uh, my main platform is on you is YouTube, so uh, my audio is already out, but my debut on YouTube will be uh, in two weeks, guys. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I know, and I'm I, looking that way. Maybe it's good to tell people to to let them know where they can find us. Because yeah, they right. can find us on different uh, different uh, uh, platforms. Right, right. But my my website, my name's Tomoko, three O's. Not Tomika, you know, tomato, but my, <laughs> my name is Tomoko and my website is tomokomusic.com. Mm -hmm. So everything else is mostly youtube.com slash Tomoko Music. Then you can mm -hmm. find me yeah. there. Yeah. 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 But uh, I want to know, uh, I had really like a funny, uh, unexpected moment. How about I, you I guys? Will, I will ask, we will go there because, but before we forgot, we have to tell everybody that you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on anchor.fm. You can find mm -hmm. us on Apple podcasts mm -hmm. and um, those three main uh, platforms. You can go easily. And we also put our links in our Instagram. Did, didn't we for, for you guys uh, to go quickly. I'm to our... not sure if I got that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I got that far. I think I did. Oh, we, we will do. We, yeah, you, yeah. you will be there as well, Tracy. I will help you. Because <laughs> when you go to our Instagram, you can find in the in the bio, you can find the link to our anchor, and then you can right. listen easily to our podcast. And it's right, very yeah, important yeah. for you it's, to know it, where you can find us. There is just so much of the technology that's, well, I'm sure for everybody it has been, but I was bit, I would say particularly, I think that um, I found it super challenging and very resistant and I've never been quite so resistant and yet still enjoyed actually doing a, a, a course as much as this because of all you guys we're going to be meeting each other if everything's okay next year on the uh, in March we're going to be meeting yes. for graduation yes absolutely <laughs> Tomoko can you tell us about your unexpected moment yes uh, I was talking to uh, my, my friend Chris Guerrero He's a piano virtuoso and a singer songwriter. And I listened to his album and it's beautiful. It's almost impeccable. When I say almost, it's like music arrangement, lyrics, his voice is smooth, kind of like jazz, Latin, bossa nova. And I was so impressed. But there was something, tiny little thing that I wanted to mention. So after the interview, I didn't want to tell him before the interview. So after the interview, I stopped recording and I told Chris, can I offer you, uh, you know, constructive criticism? There's this little one thing, everything is so good, but your vocals are slightly rushed. And he said, yeah, of course, because I was intoxicated behind the mic. I was like, what? So I said, you know what, may can I start re-recording again? He said, go ahead, you know, let me share. So he started talking about it. It was, that was unbelievable. So I think it, that could be the best part. And I have like, so my my uh, show songwriters room is consists of usually two parts. Part one is about who you are. 
Mm -hmm. uh, well, how you started and what's your challenges and successes. And um, part two is about the song, craft of songwriting. So I let them, you know, little do a live performance and everything. But with Chris, I have part three after the show. <laughs> And he really candidly shared his personal situations like that. He didn't care, he didn't, not he didn't care, but he wanted to share to help, you know, sharing your story, it, whatever your the, the theme of your podcast is. Mm -hmm. It's all about your personal story. And that's how we connect and relate and learn from each other. So he yes. wanted to, that's why he wanted to share that very, very personal thing that he, his parents didn't even know about isn't that the isn't that the power of podcasts that we have to go into genuine and real conversations after uh, a period of time where we are 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 overloaded with reality tv which is all scripted people are yep. sick of it people mm -hmm. want oh, to yeah. hear the real story about exactly behind mm -hmm. people right Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's not the temptation island time anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. time for real. For, for, for real, for real. Times are different. Times are different. Yeah. I, I know. I know. No celebrities like like us can talk about our real stories. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and not yeah. have them edited out and all that stuff, and have the story. Let's hear the real story, not just a a sound bite. And then you think, well, where's the actual story on those? Uh, you know big media stations. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, Alexander? Of course you can. I'd like to. Um, <laughs> what's been the most impressive moment for you so far? In one of my episodes or my journey by creating my podcast? Oh, okay. Let's let's go in creating the podcast the cast, and then let's ask about one of your episodes. Uh, the most unexpected? Was it? Yeah, well, the most um in um I think the most um impressive moment so far. The most impressive moment is that when I started this podcast, I did some research on other topics for my for my target audience, and I couldn't find like podcasts which are on the same uh, on the same page. So I was happy, like no competitors or something. But then. I started my podcast and I started my Instagram page and I found like uh, peers who are who are going into uh, the, the, the subject I'm going through, like challenges and helping people overcome those challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, I found Phil McAuliffe, he's from New Zealand, Michael Delorio, Patrick Morano, all guys who are wanting to help other people gay men who are dealing with their challenges and they've been on my on my on my podcast and it's so great to not be competitive but be helpful and to yeah. joint venture with each other and share our stories with each other and not because we want to be the best but because we want to help and we all have the same mission and that's something what i really like yeah yeah that's beautiful and that's amazing i don't think and, you could have put it better <laughs> sorry I don't think you could have put it better. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it is It is like it is. And when I talk about my, um, actually, I'm not a reader. I am, uh, I, I don't, I actually don't like to read books, but I've been to the, and I don't know the English word, but like every couple of months you have to test if you're still healthy about your SPD, SPD. I don't Not know. Sure about, no, sorry, forgive you know, me. I don't sexual know. illness no. stuff. Oh, okay. Yes. You go to test if you're HIV, if yeah. you if you have something like that. Yeah. Okay, this is really bad translated. Forgive me, guys. But you go there and there was a flyer of a of a of an author. He wrote the book for note. It's translated to fucked up. And he's been in a community where he and his partner were in uh drugs and sex parties and they were addicted to it but his partner became more and more addicted to it and he became addicted to his relationship with his partner who was not a good partner for him and that's so interesting to read that book and i was like it was a very thick book and i was reading it like the whole day and night and then i had him on my show 
it was amazing to have an author who was so inspiring you by his story to have you on the other side of the table mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. him the questions you are still boiling inside of you and especially addict getting addicted it was not about drugs it was not about the sex it was addiction to a relationship or addiction mm -hmm. to love and mm -hmm. what does that do to people it is it is it is insane it's so beautiful to hear his story absolutely yeah. amazing mm. that's wow. amazing wow thank you wow. absolutely and you trace and you tracy what was your most unexpected moment on this course um the fact that i did it <laughs> <laughs> because you did I, it! Know, I know but because for me i just done something else that i couldn't believe i did either which I kind of got tricked into uh, sort of two, three years before this course came along, I discovered this thing called ski, uh, uh, ski nar therapy. A very long story short, it was it's a healing modality that's an, a natural way of readdressing the body's balance so the body heals more easily, whatever this situation is, whether it's a sore arm or, it's a, or if it's a more serious illness. And uh, so I just uh, finished this degree and it was like I was off my head trying to get to the end of it, but I did do. And then Brian Rose comes into my life. How very dare he? <laughs> and then I'm straight on this other course. I'm showing my husband and saying, look, this looks so good. I'm going on it. This is it. This is my reconnection back into the prog world. And, you know, I'm writing all these songs and I want to reconnect with people. And I've got so many stories. I want to hear other people's stories. And, you know, so, yeah. So I think the fact that I did it, was probably the most impressive but the actual course itself um the realization that it is possible for somebody who's technophobic like myself dyslexic dyspraxic technophobic every <laughs> phobic to come on a course like this and get the support the way this course is created because i've been on other business courses which are superb consciously spiritually and they and they support you but this course tops it because from across our different parts of the world we're coming in with their strengths and weaknesses and we're helping each other yeah. and yes. it's really it's been amazing yes that, i think probably it's been the, the most unexpected thing because most courses if is if well if you can't do that it's tough you shouldn't be on the course on this yes. course, ah, but there's somebody else in your team that knows that. Or if you don't, we go searching and yeah. we grab people and they yeah. show us. And then we get people on screens doing virtual showings if it's really technical stuff, like we've been doing. <laughs> you, you, you've come a long way, Tracy. You're on the stream yard, but I'd like to uh, give a lot of praise for your husband because that he helped you a lot. <laughs> Sorry, you were awake so many nights already. Sleep well, as, as you know, for me, I know, it's, I know it's the same for everybody across here, but with our Zooms are twice a week. And for me, it, it, in Brisbane time, it's 2.45 in the morning. So, like, you know, I've got matchsticks in my eyes, but I'm still, I'm loving it. And it's and fantastic. look at this. Like, mom and Julie also tuned in with me. Sounding great, Trace. Like they're that's, my, that's, that's my that's mom crazy. and my two sisters. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a fan base. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Sounds great. Good. So now we we've talked a lot about what we what we experienced, uh, what we did, but I think it's really good, Tomoko, to know more about your mission. What can we expect from you from now till one year or two years from now? What is your podcast and you are, look like? Well, you know, we talked about the importance of uh, non-famous people because without editing and everything. But I, I have to tell you honestly, the one big person that I would love to have on my show within a year, hopefully, it will be Stevie Wonder. Woo! Because, because this is the person who changed my life, who taught me about the importance of songwriting. And ain't nobody heard have you ever heard how he came up with superstition or no. <laughs> ribbon in the sky i mean you know that will be out of this world so i hope he just uh turned to uh 70 years old this year 
He just had a kidney transplant and I hope he stays healthy so he can uh, meet with me and do this interview on wow. songwriting room, songwriters room. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had him on the show, are you stopping then? Is that it? Am I what? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that would be the biggest start again. What, what, what are you going to, uh, what are your listeners, uh, what kind of value are you giving your listeners within now and two years? What can they expect? Are they are going to meet you or are you going to setting up live events? What is your... Right, what right, is your... Now, right now, until uh, in this uncertain times, as you can see, uh, on a, when I use Zoom, I'll be in Bahama with this green screen. <laughs> but we will meet through Zoom. And uh, like I said, my main platform is on YouTube, The not just audio, but my YouTube is going to debut in two weeks. And you can see me like this with the songwriters on the other side. But hopefully when we can travel, I would love to have songwriters round table and meet in person but until then uh we will meet online right. and yeah show demonstrate uh the process of songwriting amazing yeah i'm Beautiful. so looking forward to what's going to happen to you yeah. tomorrow i think i think Thank i'd you. actually love to come into one of your songwriting rooms because yes my, my my yes, way of please. songwriting is, is I, I write in a very disorganized manner. I like it. It works for me. It, it usually involves a glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then I start playing and it's like really getting going. And But it's, a dis it's kind of disorganized in a very organized manner. It works out. But I would love to see what that would be like to be part of to have mm -hmm. to kind of be like um yeah in a structured situation or probably terrifying you, but you um, know you know weeks ago i already approached you earlier when i you saw your keyboard in in your <laughs> uh you know background but just yeah. you you bluffed it off like oh i am i'm not writing right now so i just yeah. went to that. <laughs> maybe you guys have to set up something together like maybe start with an episode and inspire yeah. each other maybe there's something beautiful coming out in fact it was it was true what i was telling you my, my songs are written on my baby taylor guitar and um the keyboard is there really to aid um when i do vocal coaching and things like that so i don't really write with it Okay. Um, but for the songs with the producer I'm working with, when he gets an idea that one of my songs I've written should go over to piano, then I just thought, you know, I've really got to start learning the basics of piano. But we're, so, we're just doing a degree for three years and then coming on to this programme, although the music's in the heart all the time, it's like getting back into it is going to be, uh, you know, <laughs> making the making real good time. And, um, yeah, yeah just structuring time is my my biggest thing. That's my biggest fear structuring time this is all about that isn't it and when you had structured it where are you in one to two, two years gosh i would like to think that this is still going and uh that you know i've gotten on top of my music as well and my music's well out there too and i'm just really enjoying these shows and i've got to the point where i won't be so frightened to ask the bigger people on that i'd like to have on the show so i'm not actually frightened of it but it's just like that that no, actually, I'm terrified. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and when you when you leave that behind, what 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 is your dream? When because when you, you know dream, what the real dream, the real dream, right? it, it's really about the connection, and it's really about the stories, and it's really about what something you brought up earlier on. Because it's like I'm fed up with the the huge broadcasting media stations like the TV, and I think we've got to create something for the future here: it's real stories, true stuff, and recreate recreate something because i'm kind of fed up being fed a load of nonsense to be honest with you so my dream is to keep this going and obviously it's the music and the reconnections and to kind of elevate it to a place where a lot of people are that interested that it would build build up through them telling me what they want so that 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 was part of my thing as well because my niche was to reach out to people of my kind of age area so i did reach out to people uh that were sort of post premenopause purely to help me to structure the show because they're around my age group and would think like me and um, perhaps give me some ideas. So I'm, I'm asking for that now. If you've got questions and 
things that you could tell me once you've listened to the shows and that you would like me to add or think of or people that I could talk to then yeah I, I know and I know a few but it's really good to get the feedback as to where other people see it from from their perspective it's because it's such so, a different perspective this side isn't it you go with the flow and you're going with the feedback of people and then discover your path yes so it could twist and turn so yeah. to me coming in here it's it's always going to be that it's always the music to start with my core value is learning to listen and listen to other people and and i love the music but it's be, it's becoming well being well in myself and hearing people's story of not just survival but living really really living and sharing those stories of from adversity or, or from hilarity you know i love you know we all have good fun we have to lift the spirit so uh yeah. Yeah, so I really would like it. To, I'd like it to go in that direction, but I know there's serious stuff in life too. So this, for me, is like a chat show rather than a normal progressive rock show that talks seriously only about the music and a lot of them, not all of them. I want this to be a bit more fun where people can come in or a bit more chat show like, not just. I, uh, I was I was wondering, Alexander, uh, me and Tracy, we know already uh, been in music business, so, so we know a lot of people. We already have a lot of guests that we want to invite. But what about you, Alexander? Is there a community? How do you find uh, your uh, guests and what? who are mm -hmm. your dream guests in the, in the future? Uh, to answer your first question, I find my guests through Instagram. I think that's a great platform to find others. Um, my dream guest how do you how do you know that they're gay guys i wink and they wink back <laughs> <laughs> that's what i wanted to know <laughs> that's the answer i wanted to hear no i know what they're like their their stories and their instagram profiles are built on it and i also want to go and invite people who are starting to follow me on my instagram account proud to be out Right, uh, because then you have the real genuine conversations, right? right. Um, my uh, my dream guest, he is a celebrity, but I think he can. I can have a really genuine conversation with him. Will be Ricky Martin. Uh, I'll be wonderful. watching. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> I love Ricky Martin. Why is he gay? Yeah, me I don't too, know. Okay. Me too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I have I, I I have to tell you I have a thing for gay guys. I don't know why because regular guys are so straight. I mean, what I want. Uh, and it's it's not interesting enough. Gay guys have two two sides. You can be like Billy Porter. I'm a huge fan of Billy Porter if anybody knows. I knew him since 20 years ago when he was nobody but anyway uh he said he was on oprah show before he became big time he was on oprah show came out as a talk about with two other gay guys you need to see it that was more like a 10 years ago and he was about being gay and he mm -hmm. said i can be i can be strong and i can be queen i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think the, very, the, 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 the interesting story about Ricky Martin is he's been a womanizer, womanizer for so long. Um, and now he finally came out. He has his two sons. It's a very inspirational story. He's a very, I think he's a very honest, friendly and genuine person. And yeah. it would be great yeah. to meet him, date him and marry him. What? What? <laughs> first, have an interview with him. No, I'm kidding. Ah. So, well, guys, it has been an hour. Are there? Wow. Really? It is an hour, right? <laughs> almost, not almost, eight minutes, but it is. it went so fast. Are there any other great things we want to share before we end up this, this launch day? You end up thinking about it when you've gone, don't you? You know, uh, <laughs> there's probably so much to say. Uh, but um, I just say I'm really looking forward to this, even though it's a scary, scary journey. I'm really glad that I'm really glad to have met and worked with you guys and, mm -hmm. you know, and shared two days a week with you, um, Zooming from across the world with 90 or 100 other people at once. Um, and then getting into our other groups. We, ha we had a larger group of 23 um, with Kula, Kaula being our team leader. 
And now we're down to Alexander. <laughs> no, so, we did it with the three of us. Carla! Carla! Thank you, Carla. We are Thank very you, Carla. happy to have you as a team leader. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a yeah. great team and it's just one more week, but I'm sure we all stay in contact and keep, uh, we will be accountability coaches from each other, right? We will help each other yes. when we have problems or when we have resistance. Yes. Yeah. It has been a great journey. We learned so much and I think we grew as a person uh, as well and we know better what we want. And actually, we if we're gonna meet each other in March, it will be amazing. Yeah. And uh, I can't I, I can't wait to see you guys in real life. May, may I just say actually something that you know when you said you've got that one thing to say because of course uh, Tomoka you were giving about your YouTube channel. I know with um, some techs I've had working with me that have pointed out a few things to me about it, they've gone on and looked at me online and thought but you've got all this stuff and yet you've not got this connected to that. And yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm discombobulated, but I will be eventually like that. I will have my stuff on YouTube. I will, I will finally get that website of mine out there because <laughs> it's just got to happen now. It's just a, a case of when there's time to actually do it and it will be fairly soon because it's going to be necessary. So, because yeah. I've been asked that for years and I've just always got excuses. So I kind of run out of excuses. <laughs> you have to do it now. Yeah, we have one more last question for you, Tracy. It's from D Smith. Who will you, who will, you be interviewing next who will i be interviewing next well actually the flying doctor who loves prog rock <laughs> that should make them laugh <laughs> he loves Great. prog rock and he's a flying doctor i think they might have an idea of who that is it'll Great. be part two <laughs> so uh we're gonna end up our launch uh episode it was very exciting to do this live it was the first was. time for me for you guys yes as well right Yes, <laughs> amazing best, too. Best live stream. Yeah. yeah. Thank you again. And um, I think it is, it's good to uh, repeat once again where people can find us. For myself, you can listen to Proud to Be Out on Spotify, on Anchor.fm, on Apple Podcasts. You can find me through P Proud to Be Out on Instagram. I have a Proud to Be Out Facebook group. And soon I will launch my own website. So I hope to see you guys soon on that on my ooh, ooh, on one ooh, of my ooh. platforms. Yay! <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and my my name is Tomoko. My show is called Songwriters Room. You can find it on platform like he said, but go to tomokomusic.com or youtube.com slash tomoko music. Yeah. Woohoo! Tracy. Yes, and I'm Tracy, and I just want to say to a couple of people, just in case you're listening out there, Martin Hudson, Kev Rowland, you're coming on my show. I know I haven't asked you properly yet, but you're coming on my show. <laughs> okay, and um, and and uh, yeah, you'll be able to find my stuff soon. Um, it's called Tracy's Prog World, and I can't wait, basically. Yeah, oh, good guys. Oh, Steve, best of luck for the future. That's the my old fan member. That's brilliant. Great guys, thank you. Thank you everybody thank you. For, for being on our show, asking your questions and giving your compliments. We're very happy with that. Thank you. We really appreciate thank you guys. That. Until thank we you. meet again, sayonara. Bye-bye. Yes. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye now.